Susan Norwell here to read The Fox, part two. So you were supposed to be thinking about the mood. I remember we told, we talked about it last time. We could describe it as dark, dark or we certainly could describe it as light. light. We also could use colors. Black, gray. Maybe a little yellow. Yellow, maybe yellow when it started to get a little brighter right. and a little lighter. Right. But we also could describe it. We could describe it in terms of how it made us feel. Maybe it made us feel a little bit. Maybe it was a little scary, scary. or a little weird feeling. Weird. Or maybe we didn't feel very comfortable. It was kind of mysterious, mysterious. and lonely. lonely. So lots of different feelings. Now, the other thing I asked you about was whether you thought the discussion with Fox was going to end there. Was that, that going, go. going. going to be, be that? Or if it continued, what would bird? Bird. What would bird say? Oops, I'm sorry. I was thinking C with your mouth. What would bird say? Say. What would bird say? So I don't know about you, but I am feeling a bit curious. A bit confused. Confused. Confused by this, but also a bit curious. I am wondering. Wonder. I am wondering, wondering what will happen. So let's get going here. Enough chit chat. Okay, so, uh oh. There's Magpie and Fox. Looks like they're continuing their discussion. Fox says no more that night. But the next day, when Dog is at the river, when Dog is at the river, river. remember the river, that's where they river. first became, they became us. 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 He was at the river. He whispers to Magpie. Oh, there's that whispering again. Do you remember what it was like to fly? Truly, truly fly. Ooh, now he is really, he is really saying Say. something. Say. Saying something that I think will get to magpies, Bird. to the birds thinking. I think Say. she's going to do some thinking, thinking. about that. Because we know how important, how important, important flying is to her. But again, Magna Pi says, I will never leave dog. And that is never. Hold on. Sorry, I have to go back to time. Never, 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 never. leave dog. Never leave dog. I am his missing eye and he is my wings. But later that day, later, I know later is here, there we go. Later. Later that day, as dog runs through the scrub with magpie, so they, they, they are, are, they are with their bodies, they are Run. They are running. Running. Magpie is on his back and she thinks, this is nothing like flying. Nothing. This is not, not. like. Like. This is not like. Fly. This is not Fly. like flying. Oh goodness. I think that bird. Bird. Bird is, is school. I think bird is listen listening, listening to that fox. Oh dear. And when at dawn, fox whispers to her for the 
third time, she whispers back, I am ready. I. I. I want. Want. I want to go. Go. I want to go. Oh dear. Maybe you saw that coming. I kind of did. Whoa. Look at that. That image just really whew, speaks speed, doesn't it? It seems like they are very, very fast. 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 Let's read and see what's happening here. When dog sleeps, magpie and fox streak. Streak past Kuluba trees, rip through long grass, and pelt over rocks. All those words are giving us an image or making us think of going so fast. Streak past. Rip through. Not just go through. Go is such a plain word. Rip through means going so fast. And pelt. Pelt over the rocks. Fox runs so fast that his feet scarcely touch the ground. And Magpie exults. Oh my gosh. She exults. She is screaming. She is screaming and feeling so, so excited. excited. So amazingly excited she exalts. At last, I am flying. I uh, am. am. I am flying. Fly. Flying. And here's the word. Size. Really, really, really flying. Wow. This feels totally different to her. Totally different. different than with dog. Dog. I don't know about you, but I, I, I am, am, I am feeling, feel, I'm feeling, feeling, kind of, kind of, sad, sad for dog. He got left behind. Hmm. There they are going so fast. Fox scorches through woodlands, scorches psh, through dusty plains, through salt pans, and out into the hot red desert. Well, they're out in the desert. Desert. I love the way that Toby says desert, kind of like dessert, but it's desert. Hmm. And I bet it is very, very hot. Hot. Very hot. And very empty. The desert is. We can't see anything just then. There they are. That's it. He stops. There they are. Fox. I don't know if I trust him. He stops scarcely panting. He is not, not even a bit, oops, not even a bit tired. tired at all. Not a bit tired at all. There is silence between them. It is perfectly quiet. Quiet. Neither moves, neither speaks. Then Fox shakes magpie just shakes shake shakes shake her right off his body right off, off his back as he would a flea and pads away You can hear the pads on his feet. He's walking slowly, but that padding is kind of like he's purposely walking away. This is no accident here. Purposely padding away. He turns and looks at Magpie 
And he says. Say. He says. Said. Now you and do dog will know what it is like to be truly alone. To be feeling so lonely. lonely. And in the stillness, Magpie hears a far away scream. Scream. She cannot tell if it's a scream of triumph, somebody being happy, or of absolute despair. Despair is sadness with no hope. No hope. Hope. Sadness with no hope. Hmm. And he's gone. Who's our magpie? Wow. That seems that that seems very, very mean. Mean. Like Fox is really mean. But it makes me think. It makes me think that there are a lot of people out there that are really, let's remember what he said in the beginning, that he was really, he was kind of rageful. Angry. Angry, very angry. But also very lonely. Lonely. And jealous. Jealous. And maybe if we don't feel, if we don't feel that anybody cares. 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 Cares about us. About. About us. Nobody cares about us. us. We don't know how to care about other people. Hmm. There's a part of me that wants to be really angry at Fox, but then there's a part of me that feels very sorry for Fox. I feel very sorry. Sorry. Sorry for sorry. him. He just doesn't get it. Magpie huddles, a scruff of feathers adrift in heat. She's all scared, all wrapped up. She can feel herself burning into nothingness. Let's go back to the beginning of the story. Let's go back to the very beginning. Do you remember when Magpie first comes to the cave? This reminds me of something. And Magpie drags her body into the shadow of the rocks until she feels herself melting into blackness. It was there she felt like nothing also. Huh. But what was it that made her feel like something? In the feel. beginning, she felt, felt. She felt like nothing. Nothing. She felt like nothing, like nothing. Nobody. nobody. But then she felt like something. Something. And we have to think about who was the someone. someone that helped her feel like something. Hmm. That might help us with the theme. It would be so easy to just die here in the desert and to just give up. Give. Give up. Up. Just give up. That would be the easy thing to do. But then she thinks of Dog waking to find her gone. Ah, Dog! Dog. That, that is... That is the someone. someone. And now Bird... Bird is... Mm -hmm. Is is thinking. Think. Thinking. Of someone besides herself. Let's see what that does.
Mm. Whoa, looks like she's moving. Let me read it. Slowly. Slowly, not too fast, because, man, she's dehydrated, i got to tell you. She is moving. Slow. Slowly. Slowly. In all that heat. Slowly, Jiggity Hop, she begins the long journey home. She is Go. going. 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 Home. She's going home. The end. That's the end. Right. A fox. What do you think? You think she's going to make it home? I don't know. I kind of think so. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the theme of this book. That's what we had talked about. And let me give you an idea about how you can do this. So you can um, communicate with your device. Just a couple of ideas, and whoever's your communication partner can put some of those ideas together and see what are the key words that you're trying to pick for this theme. The other thing you could do is you could start thinking about some key words. So your communication partner can put out some theme ideas, maybe the theme of um, thinking twice, think before you act might be the theme. Um, the value, the value of taking care of your body. Um, in life, stuff happens. You know, you lose an eye, you get a burnt wing, stuff happens. Um, the value of a good friend what a good friend means and the value of friendship. Um, maybe the theme is you need to be careful, you can't trust everybody. There's lots of ideas and themes and as you start to pull words out, your communication partner can help, help you maybe organize them and see if there's a pattern. And if that's too hard, because sometimes it's hard when people ask you a question when you're using your talker, I know that. Instead, they could give you those choices and you could say yes, no, to figure out what the theme, what do you think the theme is of this story. And don't be afraid to say no something else. Do you think it's this? Yes or no. If it isn't, say no. If it's not what's in your head, you have to be brave. And if it's not what's in your head, say no. Make your communication partner work and try to figure out maybe what you're thinking from the words that you pick. Now, if it's too hard for you to pick words, you might be able to say, you know, do you want to go into verbs? Do you want to go into describe? Do you want to go into pronouns? You know, and they can give you choices to help guide where you're going, to kind of help with the navigation. Anyway, I'd love to hear from you in terms of what you think the theme of this story is. Um, because um, I'll write back to you, I will, and I'll write back to you and I will give you um, some of the critics' views on what the theme of this book is and what my view is on the theme of this book. But here's what you need to remember is that whenever you read a story, whenever you read something like this that really speaks to your emotions, it may hit you in a different way. That's the beauty of books. To you, it might be really important, the idea of loneliness. It might be really important, this idea that, that our feelings can make us do things that we might not otherwise do. So, um, I'd love to hear from you, Susan Norwell at ret-u.org, and thanks for joining me to read Fox by Margaret Wilde and Ron Brooks. Bye.